One of the things that I really liked when I played Tunic recently was just the overall visual style and how it felt like you were playing in a miniature world. Hi, I'm Mike, and I wanted to see if I could recreate that in the Godot game engine. So let's hop into it by first looking at the game itself and kind of picking out a couple elements that we can copy. So one of the first things that I'm noticing here is that the grass interacts in such a way that it looks like it's just a vertex deformation, which we can do inside of a shader. And there's a blurring as you get further away from the player character, which is emulating a shallow depth of field, which is giving it that miniature, uh, the miniature world look. And I'm not entirely sure how we're going to do that in Godot as of this point, but we'll figure it out. So here we are in Godot. This is the scene that I have set up. You can see that there's a couple of mesh instances here for some grass and some bushes. If we take a look at the bush scene, you'll see it's just a cube mesh and a cylinder mesh colored to look like a bush. The player itself is a capsule that is along a path that I've set up to walk through the grass. And then I've set up the animation player to just have the character follow along the path that I've set up. If we look at the player scene, it's just a capsule mesh that I have colored to look vaguely like plastic. The grass, if we take a look at the scene itself, it's a set of four cube meshes that I have set to look like rectangles. I've set the material to be a green albedo, and then I have already converted it to a shader material. So just a quick example, if we have the spatial material here, you can convert it to the shader material. And so that's what I've done. So now if we look at this shader material, if we go to the shader that it's referencing, we can see it's already populated with a lot of variables and uh, some initial code, and that's all just automatically converted. Most of this we won't touch for this effect. So let's go ahead and start underneath it. First off, we want to start with creating a character position so that we know where the character is and how we want these blades of grass to react to them. Next, we'll need the character radius to know how close the character has to be to have an effect. We're going to add a sampler 2D, uh, which is the character distance fall off, um, but it's going to be a curve. And this is a cool thing that I learned from GD Quest grass shader script. And parts of this shader are based off of parts of that shader. And if you found this channel without knowing about GD Quest, go check out their YouTube channel as well. They have a lot of great tutorials on a variety of different subjects. Anyway, back to the code. Up next, we'll have a variable for the character push strength, so how far the grass deforms as the character walks by. Then we'll add a variable for how much the height will affect the amount of strength the character pushes the vertex out of the way. So with those variables added, let's hop into the vertex shader. First things first, we're going to calculate the displacement by height by creating a smooth step between zero and one, taking the vertex Y value multiplied by the height strength adjust. Next, we'll calculate the position or the direction that the character is from this vertex. So we'll take the character position minus the minus the third element of the world matrix, which is essentially getting the global transform dot origin, and then only taking the XYZ components. Then we'll zero out the Y component because we don't really care about the difference in height. It's more the displacement horizontal that we're interested in for this effect. Next we'll calculate how long that direction is and we'll store that as the distance to character. We'll calculate the fall off based on how far the vertex is from the player. That'll help control how much of an impact the push strength has on the vertex displacement. Once we're done with that, we're going to convert a direction to character to the local coordinates so that we know that we are pushing away in the correct direction. Um, if we don't do this step, there are instances where you could have your blade of grass rotated and it'll bend in the wrong way. And then finally, we'll, we're going to normalize it because we, we do only want to know the direction. Next, we'll take the fall off curve. And this is something that's very cool that GD Quest did that I'm going to add to my toolbox of tricks to use. We're using this curve here to give us another tool to control how how the strength functions and essentially it gives us a way to create some complex math but store it so that way we don't have to recalculate the same complex curve multiple times to to get the same effect. We can just look it up on the chart. And then with all of that being calculated we can now apply it all to the vertex positions. Now that we have all that, we go back to the scene, we can see that uh, it looks exactly the same. And that's because we haven't finished setting up all of the parameters for our shader. Namely, we haven't set anything is into the curve for the fall off, distance fall off. We're going to create a new curve texture. We are going to shrink it down from the default to just 128. We don't need that much information. And then we're going to right click to generate a 
curve and we're going to choose the ease out and now if we want we can rotate the curve a little bit and you can see as soon as we add this curve how much these blades of grass start to deflect from the center which currently our character position is at the zero is at the origin point and then we're going to adjust the character radius which i know is uh, 0.3 for the the capsule the strength will keep uh, and we'll adjust the height the height strength as well increase that a little bit and if we go back to the main scene we can see now that the blades of grass that are near the origin are now deflecting away from it. And while that's great, that's not exactly what we're looking for. See, if we move the character position around, it deflects all of them because they're all referencing the same material, which is a great way to, to keep this relatively simple. We don't have to change this character position for all of the different blades of grass in this particular scene because we're, they're all sharing the same material. How are we going to update this? We're going to do this in a script that we're going to add to the main spatial scene. Uh, we're just going to create a main demo uh, script. So what are the things we're going to need to know? We're going to need to know what the character is so we can get the position and pass that into the shader, the material. And because we have it set there, the character is set to move along with the animation player. We're just going to give a reference to the animation player so we can just set the animation to playing right away. We're going to need to know the material itself. And then every time we update, we're going to want to update the shader parameter for the grass material to update the position of the character. So we add the set shader parameter for character position is what we called it in the shader, and then pass along the global transform dot origin for the character. And that should do it. So if we go back to the 3D scene, make sure everything is hooked up properly. hit play. There you can see as the character moves through, the grass moves out of the way. Now for this next part, to make it feel like a diorama, I thought I was going to need to do a some fun post-processing things to blur out the screen for these post-processing effects. Turns out actually that in Godot, in the camera node, there is a section for environment here. And if we look at closely at the environment, we can see that there are depth of field far and depth of field near blur effects already built in. So if we enable those and play around with these values, we can see how it blurs the environment if it's further or nearer to the camera. So we're just going to make use of that. So I'm going to save a copy of the world environment scene that I have in this world environment node. Attach that to the camera and then just enable that in code. So that way when we're working in the scene, it's not going to annoy us with a blurry vision, but it'll give us that effect when we play the game or we run the scene. And then we'll go back to the, the script we have for the main demo, add the reference to the camera, and then, hmm, I just realized a mistake here. You don't need to enable it every time it runs. You just want to do it in the ready scene, but you do want to update the position of it or the distance between the camera and the character as it runs. So these two lines to enable it to true, put those in ready, not in the process. And the values that I'm using here are as exaggerations to make it very clear what is happening on the screen. Hopefully through YouTube's compression, you'll still be able to see the blur effects compared to the parts of the scene that are in focus. Let's give it a try. And there we have it. You can see at the bottom here how it goes out of focus as the player character moves out of the way and comes back in focus as they get closer to it. Oh, one other thing that I definitely forgot. So the camera in this scene is also set to a very narrow field of view. It's, I think I set it as five. And that's just because my preference is that there's a slight perspective uh, applied to the camera as opposed to just entirely orthographic. It's entirely up to you, whatever your preferences are. And that's how I would recreate these feelings in Godot. If you enjoyed this video, uh, hitting the like button would help it to reach a wider audience. Uh, and if you are interested in more visual effects things, I have a handy playlist right over here. 
But that's it for me for now. Good luck with your games, and I'll see you next time.